What is it that makes a painting good? I was working on something recently and started thinking about this question. Let me start by saying this is a practical guide and not a subjective opinion. There are plenty of articles talking about the various components of good art or what makes a good painting. For example, qualities like originality and emotion could be considered important ingredients of good art. But these things are all fairly subjective and everybody interprets them differently. It's a very personal and emotive experience. After all, who am I to say that a Rembrandt is better than a Picasso or vice versa? However, I think a lot of us are not trying to make masterpieces, but just good art. I believe there are a number of practical things that you can learn to help make your artwork better. So grab yourself a cup of tea and let's get stuck in. From a pragmatic point of view, a good painting can be composed of three things. Technique, observation and design. Each of these things are learnable skills that anyone can put into practice to make better artwork. So what exactly am I talking about? Later I'll describe exactly what these different skill sets really mean. But first a quick word about why you should even care. I know a lot of you are probably struggling with more basic ideas like what paints to buy or how to paint a uniform wash without it looking like a Jason Pollock splatter painting. But many artists don't consider these additional skills. And I think that's a shame because when used together they can help take your artwork to another level. After all, we could ask ourselves why we paint in the first place. For me personally, I think it's for a sense of fulfillment and creative satisfaction. There's also the pleasure and enjoyment of the painting process itself. But in order to be happy and fulfilled with the end result, surely the objective is to make something good. I think these fundamental skills of technique, observation and design can help make that happen. So let's begin by talking about artistic techniques. This is the easiest part to understand. This refers to your ability to handle your artistic tools and your skill in handling the medium. For example, watercolour paints, but the same applies to all popular mediums like gouache, acrylic or oil paints. They all have their own specific methods to be learned. Techniques are what you learn to control and slowly master the painting process. This is the practical side of putting brush to paper and obtaining, more or less, the desired result. I say more or less because there's often an element of surprise with watercolours. In watercolour painting, your artistic technique depends on some of the following. Brush handling skills, familiarity with paper, paint and brushes, watercolour washes such as flat, graduated or variegated, wet on wet painting techniques, wet on dry techniques, glazing and layering, dry brush, lifting, reserving whites and masking techniques, various texture effects like granulation, watercolour blooms, salt or alcohol, underpainting and colour mixing. These techniques are the building blocks to getting the best out of the painting process and eventually controlling the medium. This is one of the fundamental things that lead to good paintings. By the way, if you'd like to delve deeper into some of these techniques, you'll find several detailed articles on my website. I'll put a link below this video for further reference. Learning techniques is an essential first step, but even if you can master the technical skills, you still need decent observation to produce good paintings. But what do I mean by observation? Observation in art refers to the skill of seeing things in a new way and translating what you see into shapes on paper. Developing this skill allows you to observe and interpret real-world subjects more efficiently and produce the illusion of three-dimensional space on a flat sheet of paper. It's a question of perception. It's the way you see things that's important, not what you see. For example, when they look at a flower, most people think in their heads, flower. As an artist, you need to ignore the fact that this is a flower and instead focus on things like shapes, contours and colours of different tonal values. An artist's observational skill is about learning to see the different shapes of various colours and tones, and then accurately interpreting what you see onto paper. And like anything else, it can be learned, but it takes practice. Values, for example, play a significant role in learning how to see like an artist. Once you understand the importance of values in your artwork, you can really improve your paintings. Artistic observation includes things like the following. Understanding values in your artwork and seeing the big shapes among the detail. Becoming a better judge of values and of colour. Using value studies, 
Learning to see like an artist and colour matching, in other words, learning to mix the colour that you see. Again, you'll find more detailed articles about some of these topics by following the link to my website below. Now let's have a look at the final element to good painting, which is design. Design in art refers to what most of us call composition. This is an often overlooked ingredient of successful paintings. Artists use various tools, devices, rules and methods to achieve a good composition. Composition is about arranging the elements of a painting within the boundaries of your picture plane to create an aesthetic effect that is pleasing to the eye. You might not think of composition as a skill, but there definitely is a knack to achieving good composition. By developing your knowledge of composition and trying to practice different design methods, you slowly increase your composition skills. In other words, you can develop an eye for what works, and a good composition really can improve your painting. With that in mind, some common tools and strategies that help make a strong composition include things like correctly setting up a still life portrait or landscape, groups of odd numbers, variety, focal points which can be created using tricks like the rule of thirds and contrast, creating movement, leading the eye, in other words creating a path through the painting, balance and colour harmonies. Let me quickly explain some of these ideas. Groups of odd numbers are said to be more interesting than even numbers. Variety is also a key ingredient to good composition. Use various shapes, sizes, colours and distances to set up your compositions. It's also good to think about your focal point. A couple of quick methods for attracting the eye to the focal point is to use the rule of thirds or to use contrast. Contrast works because the point of highest contrast attracts the eye. Creating movement is a good way to generate interest and also lead the eye through the painting. The distribution of elements to create a balanced feeling and the use of colour harmonies are also considered good design elements in composition. Don't forget, composition is a vast subject. I know some of these ideas probably seem unfamiliar or mysterious, so if you'd like to learn more about any of these composition strategies, follow the link to my website below. In future lessons, I'll also detail how to use these design rules to set up a still life and create a good composition. Any subject can make a good painting. It's not the subject itself that makes good art. It's the way the subject is interpreted by the artist through his technical, observational and compositional skills. As you can see, a good painting results from successfully combining each of these abilities into a harmonious and aesthetically pleasing result. I think you can really bring your artwork to life by applying some of these ideas. If you'd like to receive some free watercolour lessons that I only share with my newsletter subscribers, follow the link underneath this video to sign up.